Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will see the carpooling problem which is from lead code number 1094. A similar problem which I have already uploaded is minimum platform problem. You can go there and watch this or you can uh, watch this video after watching the current video. Uh, these two problems are basically very similar. This is a simulation based problem. Now before looking at the problem statement, I would like to announce about our DSA live interview prep course which is a 3 months guaranteed preparation course where you will get the guarantee of understanding all the concepts and you will be interview ready in 3 months and this is a totally live and interactive course. Now this course is available in 2 time zones in the US time zone as well as in Indian time zone. So if you want to join any of these time zones then you can just ping us on WhatsApp and you will get the details. Now let's get back to the problem statement. Now in this problem there is a car with capacity empty seats. The vehicle only drives east. That means it just drives in one direction. Now you are given the integer capacity and an array trips where trips at i that means every uh, trip element is represented as number of passengers comma the passenger from where you want to pick those passengers and where you want to drop those passengers. So the i a trip has number of passengers which are the passengers and the location to pick them up and drop them off are from i and to i respectively. The locations are given as the number of kilometers due east from the car's initial location. So wherever the car is present you can just imagine the car to move on a single lumber line that is it is a one dimensional movement and it just moves in due east so it will only be a single directional movement. Okay. So we need to return true if it is possible to pick up and drop all the passengers whichever are mentioned in the trips otherwise you will have to return false. So let's see an example in order to get a better understanding. Now in this example let's assume that the bus capacity is 5 that means the bus cannot take more uh, people than 5. Now each of the trip item this is the first trip item that is the 0th item the first item and the second item this is basically an array of array or a list of list now in this case for each of the item it is represented in the format of number of passengers from where they will be getting into the bus and where they will be dropped okay now in this case 307 indicates that if i draw a number line then three passengers will be getting into the bus at 0 that means at location 0 3 passengers will be getting into the bus and uh, they will get out the passengers who gets in at this 0 will get out at location 7 ok on this number line. Now this is about just the first element of the trips. Now if you look at the second one then one passenger will be getting into the bus at location 4 and then one passenger will be getting out at location 7 ok. Now the third one is 4 passengers will be getting it at 7 and uh, they will be getting out at 10. Ok so the question is is it possible to actually schedule this? Is it possible that the bus starts from 0 and it keeps moving due east the bus only moves in one direction it cannot change direction and uh, whatever is the given capacity in the bus using that it will be able to take in all the passengers and it should be able to drop off all the passengers at their given bus stops. So if it is possible to do that without running out of the bus capacity then we will return true otherwise we will return false. This is the entire problem. Now in this case let us see what will be the answer. So let's say that the bus capacity is 5. Now if the bus moves from 0 and keeps, mo uh, and keeps on moving to the right then at 0 3 passenger gets in so the bus capacity will reduce from 5 to 2. Okay now if you go to the second point then actually one passenger is getting in at 4. So the capacity is 2 therefore I can accommodate one passenger and the bus capacity will become 1. Now when you reach to 7 then you can see that at 7 4 passengers are getting in as well as you will see that 3 passengers plus 1 passengers are getting out. So it always makes sense that the passengers who wants to get out you should remove the passengers who want to leave and then only take the new passengers. Otherwise in this case uh, let's say that you are taking 4 more passengers but the, but the bus capacity is only 1. 
so you, so you might say that uh, you will be returning false because you cannot accommodate all the passengers but you can also see that at this location 7 passengers this three passengers and these one passengers are actually getting out at 7 so you should always remove the passengers who wants to get out and then only you take the new passengers so if you remove them then 3 plus 1 4 passengers will get out and the capacity will become 5 from 1 it jumps to 5 because these passengers have left the bus and now can you accommodate the new four passengers yes i can accommodate that and the bus capacity will be one now now when i reach to 10 then actually these four passengers will be leaving and my bus capacity is five and then there is no other simulation to be done so you can see that i could take all the passengers and drop them off and again take in new passengers and drop them off i could simulate all of these things all of the passenger movement without running out of the bus capacity and if this simulation is possible then i will return true if it was not possible then i would have returned false when could it not have been possible let's say that instead of this one there was five or let's say instead of this one there was three so three passengers had already got in at zero and so the capacity dropped from five to two but then three more passenger wants to get in at four but the bus capacity is only two and so you cannot accommodate them and in this case you will return false so i hope you understood what you are required to do in this problem so let's see an observation which will actually help you to solve the problem now in this case all the passengers are similar and so we need to only track the current number of passengers in the bus okay and how do we do that so we need to track how many passengers are actually entering and leaving at any bus stop okay so if i see the first trip this is a trip array trips list of list and each of the item is a trip so in this trip three people are actually getting it at zero okay so three people are entering at zero so you assume that all these entering and leaving are filled with zeros because we do not know how many people are actually leaving and entering a bus stop so now in this case you can see that three people are actually entering at zero and they are leaving at seven so you can uh, write in the enter list you can write three and you can correspondingly write three for wherever they are leaving now for this one one passenger is actually entering at four and that same passenger is leaving at seven so at seven three passengers were already leaving and one more passenger is leaving so it will be updated to four now if you look at the third trip four passengers are entering at seven and then four passengers are actually leaving at 10 okay now all the trips are covered now what you need to do is our bus just needs to travel in one direction from left to right in just a single direction and we need to just simulate it with the given capacity so let's say the given capacity is 5 so first of all at any bus stop at any location we just need to see how many are leaving and we need to add that value to the capacity and then we need to see how many are entering and we need to remove that capacity okay reduce the capacity of the bus because these many people will be getting into the bus so you see that zero people are leaving at zero so it will remain the same and three people are entering so the bus capacity will reduce by three now at the second bus stop zero people are leaving so it will remain the same one person is entering the bus so the bus capacity will reduce by one now at seven four people are leaving so the capacity will be incremented because these many people will be leaving so these many more seats will be available so from one it goes to five and again four people are entering so the bus capacity will reduce to one again now at 10 four people are leaving so the capacity will come uh, from one to five and then you will see that zero people are actually entering so the capacity remains the same and you are done with the simulation so if your capacity never becomes less than zero if it never becomes less than zero throughout the simulation then you will return true that it is possible to simulate the passenger movement okay in the given trip array otherwise at if at any point of time your capacity of the bus goes below zero then you will simply return false that the simulation is not possible okay so this is how you can solve so let's see a feasible solution using this idea 
now one idea can be actually in a given list in a given passenger trip in each of the trip there are two embedded information it is saying about how many passengers are actually getting into the bus number of passengers getting into the bus at what location they are getting in and at what location they are getting out of the bus so this can be broken down into two parts saying that from where the passengers are entering how many passengers are entering and this flag depending on the value one it will say that these many passengers the passenger number of passengers are entering at this location if its value is one and if its value is zero then they are actually leaving okay so if i change the format of this from 307 if i change it to this format then it will say about how many people are actually entering at a given location so from comes first that means the location so location is zero so it will become zero and then this flag shows if people are entering or leaving the bus so one means uh, entering the bus and zero means leaving the bus okay so one will be put because three passengers are actually entering the bus at location zero so location is zero and this is the flag which will say that whether people are entering the bus or leaving the bus and this is the count of passengers these many passengers are actually entering the bus okay and then for leaving where they are leaving so this is the location where they are leaving zero means that it that the passenger are actually leaving the bus and this is the count of passengers who are leaving the bus so if i can break this uh, trip into two parts okay entering the bus and leaving the bus then it will be more convenient to actually simulate it so if i do that then by breaking them into two parts you will see that the red part here the red region is actually people getting into the bus and green region i have marked uh, people leaving the bus okay so this is how the transformation can be done so if there are three trips definitely people will be entering and leaving the bus so if there are n trips then you will get 2n as the number of uh, new broken up list okay so you can see that we need to get it sorted on a number line because the bus will always move from left to right okay so it is moving in increasing order in increasing order or in ascending order of the numbers on the number line okay so it will start from zero and it will keep on going it will start from some start point and it will keep on going to the right so a point p1 occurring before p2 on the number line must be processed first so for that reason we need to get it sorted we need to get it sorted based on the location okay so that is the reason we had taken the first parameter as location so when once we sort it you will get this as the sorted array that is a sorted list of the trips now there is a very important reason about why we actually took one as the starting point that means why do we take the flag as one for people entering into the bus and zero for people leaving the bus you will see that if i have values as let's say some location x with one and some number of passengers y leaving it x1 y1 and if i have x2 zero and y2 and if you are going to sort it let's say this is x1 and this is this is x1 okay and this is y2 now if you are going to sort it then people leaving the bus will come before people actually entering the bus and this is one of the requirement right if you are at a bus station if you are at a bus stop then people must leave the bus first before the people getting into the bus right and for that reason if you give it zero for those who are leaving the bus then if the location is same that is if the bus stop is same then this leaving case will come before the entering case okay so people getting trying to get out of the bus will get out first and then more space will get created and so people can get into the bus right that was the requirement we already discussed so if you sort it in that order you will see that you will get this and once you get this you just need to simulate it so let's simulate them one by one when you are at the first trip you will see that you are at location 0 1 means people are entering into the bus and how many people are entering three people so capacity will reduce to 2 now at second point this one flag means people want to enter into the bus how many people want to enter one one person 
so capacity will reduce by one this here uh, shows that this zero shows that people want to get out of the bus how many people want to get out of the bus one person so capacity will increase by one if one person gets out now at this point zero means people want to get out of the bus and three people want to get out so the capacity will reduce by three i mean increase by three so it will become five and at this point people want to get into the bus four people want to get into the bus so you will see that it will reduce the bus capacity by one and here zero means people want to get out of the bus so four people actually want to get out of the bus so capacity will uh, will again come back to five and then there are no more trips so when all the trips simulation is done and the capacity never ran below zero then actually uh, you successfully simulated uh, whatever uh, simulation was given to you and so it is always possible to perform the simulation if at any point of time you are not able to perform it you will return false okay so i hope you were able to understand the entire algorithm it is important to mark getting in as one getting in flag as one and getting out flag as zero and this i have already explained you can also try out some dry runs and you will be able to understand this is important because uh, somebody leaving if you are at a station somebody trying to leave the bus should leave the bus first and then only you take the new passengers so that you don't run out of space okay so this is pretty important now the entire algorithm takes you to actually uh, take all these n items uh, bifurcate that means divide it into two parts so you have two, two n items and then you are actually sorting it so sorting will take n log n time okay so the time complexity will be order of n plus n log n so that will boil down to your n log n algorithm which is a sorting algorithm let us now look at the code so this is a simple code of the carpooling in this case i have taken n as the number of trips and then i have created all the bifurcations which were needed the starting and the ending point apart okay taking them apart so n points converted to two n points and then i have sorted it according to whatever i explained sorted it based on location and then once you are done with this you just need to perform your simulation that if somebody wants to get in your capacity will reduce and if somebody wants to uh, get out your capacity will increase and if at any point of time uh, the current number of people who are in the bus are actually greater than the capacity then you need to return false because you have run out of your bus capacity otherwise after performing the simulation you could do this then finally you return true that we were able to perform the given simulation okay so the sorting algorithm is the most time consuming algorithm which is n log n so this is your time complexity i hope you were able to understand it if you have any doubt then please feel free to ask in the comment section and we will try to help you as soon as possible if you want to get well prepared and get some confidence for your upcoming interview then you can also consider joining our dsa live preparation course this will immensely help you multiply your job offer chances if you like this video then please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you